Hello, what I'd like to do today is um, talk to you about this, uh, this current probe. It actually is a Tektronix AC-DC current probe. Uh, it is basically a Hall effect device. Now this guy has to actually be plugged into the mains, which I've done over here. And then the output of the probe is connected, in my case, to channel one on the oscilloscope. So look, um, come a little bit closer and then I can show you uh, some of the features of the probe. Okay, the first thing you'll notice here is that we have a, a little arrow here. Okay, can you see that? All right, now this is a clamp-on device. So if we have a cable such as this, we simply clamp it around the cable like so. But what we need to make sure is that this probe is connected with that arrow in the same direction of the actual current flow. So it's important to actually do that. Okay, now look, have a look over here. This, again, it might be a little bit hard for you to see, but see if you can see this. Now what we have is a little switch here and there are three positions. Uh, lower one here is the off position. If we move it up to the first position here, um, that indicates that we're set to 10 millivolts per amp. Moving up to the top position, that indicates that we are at 100 millivolts per amp. And in a moment we need to explain really what that means. Now above here you'll notice there is a little wheel. Um, now this wheel is really used to calibrate the probe such that when we attach the probe into our circuit, we need to make sure that we are registering a zero for zero current on the oscilloscope. On that first setting, we have 10 millivolts per amp. So what this means is that one amp really corresponds to 10 millivolts. On the second setting, we have 100 millivolts per amp. So what this means is that one amp corresponds to 100 millivolts. So we're going to use this particular setting here. So in summary, what that really means is that one amp corresponds to 0 0.1 volts. So look, there isn't a 1 to 1 ratio there, it is actually a 10 to 1 ratio, 1 amp corresponding to 0 0.1 volts. And we'll kind of uh, make note of that. Okay, the actual circuit that we're going to look at is very simple. It consists of a power supply, and we're going to set that to 20 volts. We're going to feed that into a resistor, and this is going to be a 10 ohm resistor, and that is essentially our circuit. Now look, by Ohm's law, the current that's flowing in that circuit is simply going to be the 20 volts divided by the 10 ohms, which is 2 amps. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our current probe and we're going to simply clamp it to our cable like so. Making sure though that the arrow is in this direction here, the same direction of the actual current flow. And then of course this then connects over to the oscilloscope. So what we have here is our actual circuit. There is our power supply which was set to about 20 volts and then this is connected uh, to our high wattage resistor. Now don't forget we have about 2 amps of current flowing. So we have a current that's flowing out of the power supply through this cable, through the resistor and then back along into the power supply. So let's have a brief look at our oscilloscope settings. Uh, our probe is connected to channel 1 and we have a scale setting being 100 millivolts per division. Our, ten, our attenuation is times 1. Now you've got to remember oscilloscopes really only measure voltages so 
If I were to go over here and basically select current as my type of probe, what we've effectively done is we've sort of relabeled the scale here such that each one of these vertical divisions here would represent, in this case, 100 milliamps per division. It is important to make sure that the probe has been calibrated. Um, it's not actually connected to anything, so we would really expect really to be displaying a zero condition. So on the scope over here, we have the signal associated with the probe. Um, let's establish where the actual uh, ground is or the reference is. Uh, pressing this little button over here, we can see that's where the ground is, the zero. And you can see the little one designator there showing us that condition. Okay, so I'll press this once again. You can see there's a shift. Okay, so this is not being calibrated. So in order to calibrate it, we're going to rotate this little wheel over here and we're going to bring our trace all the way down to the zero uh, condition, like so, like so. And I think we're just about there. So I now need to uh, take this probe and actually connect it into the circuit. And so I'm going to take this cable, I'm going to actually clamp it to the cable like this, making sure that that arrow is in the same direction as the current flow. And then I'm going to just simply rest this guy on the bench. Okay, let's have a look at our scope here. Look, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to set that back to voltage. Okay, looking at my scale here, I have 100 millivolts per division. So let's see what we've got. We've got 100, we've got 200 millivolts. Now, if you remember, uh, what we had was 100 millivolts corresponds to one amp. And so really, since we've got 200 millivolts, we've got two amps of current. All right. Now let's go ahead and set this to a current probe type and see what we have. Well, our scale is 100 milliamps, and so now it looks as though we've got, what, 100, 200 milliamps. Well, that doesn't seem right, does it? 200 milliamps. Um, but if you remember from our previous discussion, we said there was really, what, not a one-to-one -one relationship between current and voltage, but we said it was really a 10-to-1. So one amp corresponds to 0.1 of a volt. So therefore, what I need to do is I need to actually go over here and set my attenuation factor to really 8 times 10. When I do that, I can see my scale is now what? It is one amp per division. And so we have one, two amps of current flowing. Look, I hope this helps you understand how to use a current probe and how to make measurements. Now, one thing, be careful actually where you place it. Uh, it is a Hall Effect device and uh, it is subject to picking up other electromagnetic radiations and of course that will affect your result. So, I'll see you next time.